Sergei Somnani is an expert on Eastern Europe and joins us now. Sergei, thank you so much for your time. I know you've worked in Kiev, you've worked in Russia, you've worked all over Eastern Europe. Are you shocked at what you're seeing in terms of Russia attacking the second largest country in Europe and committing what everybody watching says are war crimes and breaking international law? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. Uh, I, I see what Russia does since years. Uh, I've been a teenager in Russia at uh, that time, Russian citizen, as Russia has destroyed Chechnya Republic, having killed some dozens, thousands of Chechens, including children, women, uh, like massacring uh, the whole villages and destroying Grozny to, to ashes. It was like middle of the 90s. Um, as a German citizen, I witnessed uh, the cruelties in Syria, like gas bombing, bombing of hospitals, uh, all the things we uh, see now in, uh, in Ukraine. And that is what the whole world uh, was uh, observing uh, since years. I say, uh, no, I'm absolutely not shocked uh, of what I see in Ukraine in terms of surprise. Of course, I'm shocked as a human being because there are a lot of my friends and colleagues uh, scattered all over Ukraine. I have my very good colleagues who are in Kharkiv now. I've been to Mariupol many times. I've spent like a lot of time in Mariupol, and I have good uh, partners there from, from the NGOs who were uh, fighting for anti-corruption, for green environment, like against the air pollution. Uh, we need to imagine Ukraine was building a democratic society with gender rights, with human rights, with environmental policy, with green energy, with bicycle lanes. That is what Ukrainians wanted to do. And now all these people are engaged in the fight against, uh, against poor genocide, because that is what Russia brings. Uh, since decades, and uh, let us not be mistaken, it's not Putin's war, it's Russians' war. And many Russians stay behind this genocidal war and support this war until now. Of course, most of them are brainwashed. Of course, most of, course, most of them are deprived of uh, information, but uh, still they support it, they drop bombs, they kill civilians, they loot, they rape, and uh, they do all these crimes. There are a lot of anti-war protests taking place, of course, Ege, as you know, and many of those people on the streets, they are being arrested because Vladimir Putin doesn't want that to be shown on Russian TV. So there, there, there is an, uh, a sentiment against the Russian attacks on Ukraine. We have to be fair to Russian people as yes, well. Yes, of course. It's like, of, it's, yeah. like we had, it's like we had in Germany during the Nazi war against the whole world. We also had very brave Germans like the Red Capella or the White Rose resistance organizations who spread anti-war leaflets and protested against Hitler. We even had the, the conspiracy against Adolf Hitler led by uh, Colonel von Stauffenberg. And these were very decent uh, writers, Germans. But still, uh, we cannot say that World War II was a war led by only Adolf Hitler and maybe Heinrich Himmler or like a dozen of Nazis. No, it was the war which millions of Germans unfortunately have supported. And we needed dozens of years of denazification of Germany after the World War II. I'm afraid Russia will need dozens of years of denazification and demilitarization and deputization after this war, unfortunately. How do you see the EU's position here? I mean, both NATO and the EU have said that they're not going to get involved in the conflict itself in terms of putting troops in Ukraine to fight against the Russians. Sanctions, they seem to be pretty much uh, mm -hmm. the main thrust of the bloc's attempts to at least get Russia to suspend its operations. Do you think it's enough? Unfortunately not. And um, we have like a very strange position within the EU. We have Germany, which is still not ready to ban uh, Russian oil and gas from the EU market, or at least from German market. We actually fund Russian war on Ukraine by buying Russian gas and Russian oil. And um, of course, uh, the um, announcement by NATO membership, uh, by NATO members that NATO will not intervene in Ukraine until Russia does not hit uh, NATO territory 
is something which uh, Putin and people like him understand as a uh, pure invitation to fight Ukraine further to the border and maybe a bit over the border, because we already knew there were Russian drones which uh, violated Romanian and Polish, uh, Polish airspace. There have been reports that today a Russian fighter jet has violated Polish airspace. These reports were uh, like questioned, but we have seen uh, missile strikes on a Ukrainian military facility just 30 kilometers from the Polish border. The day after um, the NATO has declared that NATO will not intervene in Ukraine. So it was from Putin's side a clear sign. OK, I have got like some sort of security guarantees from NATO that NATO will not intervene as long as I don't hit NATO. So I have a carte blanche to attack any Ukrainian target until the last inch of Ukrainian territory boarding to NATO. So I think it's a very dangerous sign from NATO to give Putin these kind of guarantees. And it does not de-escalate, it escalates the situation, unfortunately. Whatever any external actors are prepared to do, Sergei, uh, whoever they may be, the United States, EU, NATO, surely it's down to the two leaders. It's down to Vladimir Zelensky and Vladimir Putin. And Zelensky has said that any compromises, this has just appeared in the past hour or so, he has said any compromises with Russia will need to be put to a referendum in Ukraine. But when it comes to the man in Moscow, what mm. do you think Vladimir Putin is prepared to accept as the very minimal to stop these attacks? Or do you think he wants mm. everything that he says is his aim? Because if it is his aim to have a neutral mm. Ukraine and a demilitarized Ukraine, surely he's looking at a long occupation of the country. I'm afraid Putin's aim is not to have neutral Ukraine, but to have destroyed and defeated Ukraine. And uh, we know out of history that no compromise with Putin brings peace. Ukraine uh, has had a lot of compromises. It has Minsk I, Minsk II agreements. Ukraine has proclaimed from uh, one side the ceasefires many times. And uh, Putin used all these opportunities every time to regain forces, regroup forces and start attacks. Uh, Putin's claims about Ukraine, like densification of Ukraine or discrimination of Russian-speaking majorities are uh, like they, they are not sustainable. They, they have nothing uh, in facts uh, to be to be protected. Like Putin kills now a population of Russian-speaking cities. And of course, there were like no Nazi regime in Ukraine, a country which voted with 73% uh, for a Jewish president. Um, so uh, I'm afraid like no compromise with Putin is possible because any compromise with Putin just opens the door for the next attack. Just the opposite. Uh, Ukraine, uh, it is Ukrainian vital interest to fight now until the end, because for every person who is now on the occupied territory, being on the occupied territory is a threat. We know of mass rapes by Russian army. We know about kidnapping of Russian uh, by Russian army of uh, local activists, majors, historians, sociologists. We know about filtration camps. We know that people who tried to escape from Mariupol were either killed or kidnapped and sent to distant cities of Russia without any documents, without their mobile phones. That is what Russians and Soviets did with all occupied nations. They did it in Estonia in 40s. They did it with Ukrainians in 40s as they just relocated population of whole villages of Western Ukraine to Siberia just to erase Ukrainian uh, nationality and Ukrainian ethnicity. And that is what they're doing now, unfortunately. So I'm afraid any compromise uh, is a danger for Ukrainian because it gives Russian uh, army and Putin opportunity to kill Ukrainians further without having any obligations. Ukraine has guaranteed uh, like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, its uh, non-nuclear status has given up its strategic nuclear bombers, has given up partly to Russia. It is cruise missiles, which Russia uses now to attack Ukraine, cause like about 600 of Soviet-produced cruise missiles were given from Ukraine to Russia as a part of payment for the gas, and Russia now uses these missiles to, to, to hit Ukrainian cities. So any agreement with Putin's Russia is a deadly trap and may not, uh, may not be accepted. Sergei, thank you very much indeed for the analysis. Sergei Sumnani speaking to so us much. from Berlin.